Father, we just love you. We just thank you. We just praise you for this wonderful Sunday. God, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful weather you've given us. We thank you, Lord, the, the sun shines on us, the breeze is upon us, Lord, and we just thank you, God. It's a privilege to be out under the heavens, Lord, to worship you and to praise you, God, to lift up your name. God, oh, I thank you right now, Lord, that the world will know that there's a, there is a God in heaven that loves them. The world will know that there is a Jesus that died on the cross for them. The world will know that the Holy Spirit is there to transform them to kingdom status. And I thank you, God, that the world will see a Savior coming back, Lord. Coming back for his church. Oh, I thank you, God, that we will be ready for the coming of the Lord. But in the meantime, God, that we will be a witness of your truth. That we know that Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So, God, we call, come together, Lord, with our hands lifted up unto you, God, giving praise, giving glory, giving honor to you, Father, for you are a good God. You are a loving God, and you want the very best for your people, Lord. And I thank you, God, that without, throughout today, Lord, that we will not lose sight in who you are, that we will not lose sight in who we are in you, God. In you we live and move and have our being. Jesus, you are the author and the finish of our faith. And I thank you, God, that we will be a witness of that truth. And the truth will allow people and will make people free, Lord. Under the power, under my voice, Lord, as I speak, oh God, as I speak, oh God, this word that I am, that I am praying, this word I'm about to preach will go out into the north, the south, and the east and west. And people will know that Jesus is the only way, that Jesus is our salvation. And we thank you, Father. For this opportunity today. I bless those that are that are here today, those that are came to our drive-in service. I ask you to bless them right now, Lord. Bless those that are unable to come, Lord, that are watching by internet. Bless them, Lord. Let them see your supernatural hand move upon their life spiritually, physically, and financially, Lord. Let them know that there's a God in heaven, Lord. And if there's any sickness and disease, God, I thank you, God, that you will prove that you sent Jesus to heal them, Lord that your supernatural healing power will take place. Because God, we know according to your scriptures in Mark chapter 16, if we preach the good news, signs and wonders will follow. And I thank you, God, those signs are salvation, healing, restoration, and transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. I speak this over this day. I speak it over, over you spiritually. I speak it over you physically. And I speak it over you financially, that you will see the provision of a good God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's make our decree. Repeat after me. Today, we decree Jesus, the written word, is our salvation, healer, restorer. We decree the Holy Spirit is our transformer. Today, we activate our faith and God's sophisticated life of abundance for all of the ALM family. We decree the four corners of the earth have been purposed, planned, and expected by God with 500 families of affluence to join this church. We speak to the north to give up families of power and influence. We speak to the south to give up families of royalty and prestige. We speak to the East to give up families of brilliance and inventiveness. We speak to the West to give up families of kingdom wealth. We speak to the ministering angels to go forth and prepare the way for ALM's ministry of engagement called evangelism. This decree in Jesus' name shall be established and the light of God will shine upon it. Amen and amen. If you believe that ALM, beep your horn. Today's going to be a great day. Today's going to be a glorious day. This week is, go is going to be highly favorable. How do I know that? Because God's in control. Because God has made a way for his church to excel in these exciting times. God has made a way for his church, who has been called by his name, Abundant Living Ministries. You, he has made a way for you to be a witness of his truth. That no matter what 
direction the wind, the rain, the flood may come, you will stay standing. You will stand spiritually. You will stand physically. And you will stand financially. God will provide. If you believe that, let me hear another amen from you. Let's take our Bibles. Let's pledge our allegiance to the Bible. Say this after me. I pledge allegiance to God's holy word. I will make it a lamp under my feet, a light under my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I will not sin against God. If you believe that ALM and you apply this word in your life, you will not sin against God. That is a biblical truth. This word will open your eyes. This word will open your heart. This word will give you a language to speak like no other. A language that the world cannot speak. The language that the world cannot understand. But you, the believer, the, the Bible believer, faith walking Bible believer, um, tongue talking individual, you will know that God is alive because you pledge your allegiance to this word. This word will come true to your life. You will see the provision vision of God as I speak this week get ready to see the provision get ready to see the provision I'm talking about provision that the government can't even come close to I'm talking about provision that only God can give you it's in this word and as you pledge your allegiance to it you will see the hand of God move on your behalf and the world will see God's hand upon your life to the point where it will drive them to you it will I mean it will draw them to you and say hey why are you different than me? Because of your allegiance to God's word. It's yea and amen. All through the scripture when you read it, God always provides for his people. He is a covenant God. He does not renege on his covenant. He always comes through. He did it with Abraham. He did it with Isaac. And he'll do it with, he did it with Jacob. He did it with Israel. He did it with the disciples. And he'll do it with his church. If you just believe. If you just have faith in God. This word that we hold in our hands has a language that we need to learn to speak. I truly believe this. It's a language that we need to learn to speak. A language of faith, hope, and love. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. It says, as for me, this is my covenant with them. I want to say that again. This is God speaking to Isaiah. And he says, as for me, this is my covenant with them. Now, we know God is a covenant God. And we have a covenant through Jesus Christ. And he says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. God has given us a covenant, and that covenant has a language. And this word that we hold in our hand reminds us of God's covenant. And God, in, in this covenant, has a language. And God expects us, his church, who is called by his name, to speak this language. Not only speak it in our own lives, but it allows us as parents we as parents, we have to teach this language to our children, to our children's children. So we raise up a train up a child in the way he should go. Why? So he won't depart from it. We pour into them this language of this word. Anytime God speaks, he speaks with a purpose of faith, a plan of hope, and an expectation of love. ALM. We are his church called by his name. I know that I say that quite a lot because I truly believe that we are, we are his church called by his name. It is our responsibility as his church to speak this language. To speak this language of faith, hope, and love. Today, people have lost their faith, hope, and love. These exciting times have challenged us all. But in these times is where faith, hope, and love thrive because God is in control. In these exciting times, I want you to, I want you to see this. We're living in exciting times. To the world, it's perilous times. But to the church, it's exciting times. Why? Because in these exciting times, 
we see faith, hope, and love thriving. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19, in the latter part of 19, it says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against it, against him. The enemy will always come in like a flood. It rains, it floods, the wind blows on the just and the unjust. But in those times, fret not of those perilous times. Fret not of the circumstances and the situations. But in these times, thrive with God. Thrive in your language with God. Because in these times is where faith, hope, and love will thrive. Now you got to understand something. In these exciting times, there's two types of people. There's the wise and the foolish. In these exciting times, there's the wise and the foolish. Every day, we see the wise and the foolish. Every day, God sees the wise and the foolish. And in Matthew chapter 7, it talks about the wise and the foolish. In verse 21 through 29 of Matthew, of Matthew chapter 7, it says, it's very profound here. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descends, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And, in, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus was into these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrines. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as of the scribes. you got to realize something here in Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone speaks the language of God. They may look the part, they may sound the part. But is their heart obedient to God is their heart is their heart right with God is there in what they're doing right with God is it the right moment is it the right time are they doing thus saith the Lord or are they doing what they feel in the heart there's a big difference because there's a lot of people across this world that are speaking but are they speaking God's language are they speaking the language of faith Hope and love. Their motives behind it. What is their motive? Is their motive to get, pe get people saved? Get them into the kingdom of God? Or is their motive to themselves? Is their motive just to fill seats in a building? Is their motive just to look pretty on TV? What is their motive? See, our motive here at Abundant Living Ministry is to get people saved. That is our motive. Why? Because that is the language of God. God so loved the world, and he gave us a language, and that is to get people saved. That is the language of ALM, getting people saved, getting people healed from, from destruction of sin, from the, the, from, the, from, the, from the effects of sin. Get them healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, financially. Get him healed. Get him restored back to the Father. Restored back to, their, to the Father, to the right stance with God. In other words, a, a stance of, of dominion and authority on this earth. To bring everything to the subjection of the Father. That is what is being, that is what it's called being restored back to the Father. And be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Kingdom status. See, that is why God sent this church. We have a language. It's God's language. And it's all through this scripture. From Genesis to Revelation. It teaches us how to speak. It teaches us how to deal with the enemy. 
Because the enemy is going to come into you like a flood. But when he does, take a deep breath. Because you know God has your back. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, he has already raised a standard against it. Yes, it will rain upon you. Yes, the wind will blow in your face. Yes, you may be necked deep in the flood. But guess what? You will not fall. You will not fall. God will bless you. God will take care of you, church. Why? Because you speak a language that the world does not speak. You speak a language of faith. You speak a language of hope. You speak a language of love. And because of that, there is always results. David said in Psalms 51, verse 10 through 13, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, I love this part, verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. What a powerful statement. But David understood something. Lord, for me to speak your language, I have to have a clean heart. I have to have a clean heart. I have to have the Holy Spirit within me. Why? Because if I don't, I'll step out of your will. I'll step out of, I'll step out of my own. And how many people know every time David, when David stepped out of his own, he messed up. All of us can identify in that area of our lives. Anytime that we've ever stepped out, we've messed up. But let's not focus on stepping out and messing up. Let's focus on him forgiving of our transgressions. Let's lift up our hands and know that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Let's know that we're not no longer bound by the devil, but we have the Lord Jesus Christ living on the inside of us. We have the outward expression of the Holy Ghost. And through that, those that are lost, those that are bound, will find their ways. And sinners will be converted unto the Lord. To speak God's language, our hearts have to be right. A heart of obedience to God's word will always be a witness of faith, hope, and love. ALM, practice Matthew 6, verse 33 this week seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that you do this week seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness seek the language of God seek God's language out throughout this week seek his righteousness we know his righteousness is his divine his divine rules seek out his 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 kingdom seek out his divine rules why because all these things that God has purposed, planned, and expected for you this week will be added unto you. Everything that God has purposed, and yes, he has already purposed this week for you. He has already planned out this week for you. He's already brought expectation this week for you. Don't worry about the holes. Don't worry about the strategies of the devil because he has already rebuked the devil. He has already pushed aside the influence of the devil because we know how does, how does the devil influence? He uses people, places, and things. He has already defeated the devil. You just stay focused on God. You just stay focused on his kingdom. And his righteousness. Because those that's, that, that focus will thrive. You will thrive. You will be a witness of who God is. God's grace is sufficient in these exciting times for his church. It is in these times God's mercy is being poured out to people that have lost their faith, hope, and love in him. ALM, be bold in establishing faith. Hope and love. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 tells us in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. We have boldness and access. We have the boldness of God wherever we go. We have the boldness of God. But if you choose to live your way without faith, you will never please God. Without hope. You will not believe in God. And without love, you won't be able to be a giver to God. 
You have to apply these things. You have to apply this word. And if we don't apply this word every day in our life, we won't have faith, we won't have hope, and we won't have love. And if we don't operate in faith, hope, and love, because we know according to the scriptures, faith, hope, and love are eternal. They're eternal in 1 Corinthians. It's eternal. And if we're not willing to operate in that church, we're going to be like those individuals in Matthew chapter 7. We did this and we do that. And Jesus goes, depart from me, for I never knew you. And I'm telling you right now, that is not a day that you want to, you want to be at. That's not, a, that's not a place you want to be at. That's not a day you want to hear, depart from me. But I'm here to tell you, through God's grace to the church, because we know grace is a covenant word. Grace is for his church. God has given his grace for us to thrive in, in these, in these exciting times. But it's upon the mercy of God he is pouring out to those that are living in error. We cannot afford to live in error. You, as a husband, you, as a wife, you, as parents, cannot fail in these exciting times. This is when you're going to have to dig deep and you're going to have to gr grab onto God. And say, I ain't letting you go like Jacob says till you bless me. I ain't letting you go till I see what you're telling me. I'm not letting you go. Are we that tenacious as Jacob when he grabbed a hold of that angel? Are we that tenacious? I'm not letting you go till I see what you're telling me, God. I'm not letting you go till I see it happen. Are we that tenacious? Do we have enough faith to see God move? This week, do we have enough hope to believe that no matter what we see here from the world, we will not be moved? Do we have enough love for God that we look for every opportunity to give? To give. Do we have that that love? Because if we do, we will thrive. We will thrive in the midst of what. The principalities of the air throw at us. That's what separates ALM from everybody else. Look at us right now. We have never shut down. God has provided for this church every time they have service to be open. We have never. We have never closed. The doors have always been open. Because of the favor of God. Why? Because we have faith in God, we have hope in God, and we love God. And we will continue to have faith, hope, and love. And because of that, God is making a way from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Get the word out. Get the word out. We are the witnesses of God. We are the instrument of God. Don't be timid. Be bold. You have access to the throne of God. You have access to your daddy God. Don't be timid, but be bold in your faith. Be bold in your hope. Be bold with your love in all that you do. And watch God provide. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this word. I thank you, God. For this word that we hold in, that I hold in my hand is language for me to live by spiritually, physically, financially. It is a language that is instilled in my household. It is a language that is witness 24-7. To wherever, to wherever I go. And I thank you, Father, right now, Lord, that ALM will have this same spirit. They will have this same spirit, God. They, they will speak a language that will transform people's lives. That will transform them to kingdom status. And I thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon every car right now, is upon every man and upon every woman to be your church when they leave this campus, to be their church in their homes, to be their church in their neighborhoods, to be their church, their church when they go to work, when they, when they work in their business, wherever they go today, that they will be the witness of your church. They will speak a language that will transform people's lives. 
to kingdom status. I thank you, Father, for your faith, hope, and love. I thank you that Jesus practiced faith, hope, and love. He was an example to us all of what faith is. He was an example of how he walked by faith. He was an example in how he pleased you, Father. He was an example of hope and how he believed in you, that he knew that your will would be done in his life. He was an example of your love by dying on that cross. And because Jesus was that example, we, Abundant Living Ministries, a church called by your name, we will be that example. And Father, as we get ready to take communion, we do this under the presence of you. We do this out of our willingness and obedience to your word. Because each element each element represents your faith, our faith, hope, and love in you. The bread that we hold in our hand represents Jesus' body. It signifies to us that we have been made whole because of Christ's faith, hope, and love in you. He was willing for his body to be broken. He was willing to be chastised. He was willing to be scourged. He was willing to be beat upon so we, his church, can be made whole spiritually, physically, and financially. And we take this bread by faith, knowing without a shadow of a doubt, we walk in the wholeness of God. Sickness, disease, affliction, familiar spirits, plagues cannot touch us. We are protected by God, and we do this by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for that reward. I thank you, Lord, for that reward being made whole. In Jesus' name. The cup represents the blood of Christ. We take this cup by faith knowing that sin is no more. Sin's right to us is no more. We have been redeemed. The devil power is broken. Has been defeated. And we are no longer reminded of our sins but we are re redeemed from the curse of the law. And because of Jesus we have the right to go directly to our, our daddy God. We have the right we have the access to our God. And we take this cup by faith knowing that our sins have been washed away in Jesus' name. Let's take the cup. Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for all that you have purposed, planned, and expected this day to be. We do this all to give you glory, to give you praise. We speak in a language that will transform people's lives wherever we go. We will see the hand of God move on our behalf because we're willing and obedient to your word. And because we're willing and obedient, we have divine life. We have the prosperity of God. We have that life more abundantly living on the inside of us. And I thank you, God, for the opportunity this week to share forth that life wherever we go. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, beep your horns one more time. God is a good God. And He's going to prove Himself this week to you. You just seek first His kingdom. His righteousness. And let God prove himself to you 
by adding all those things that he has purpose, plan, and expected for you to you this week. Right now, we're going to practice our faith when it comes to our giving. We're going to practice our faith in pleasing God. We're going to practice our hope in believing in God. We're going to practice our love in giving to God right now. If you have your tithe, your offering, hold it out of your window. If you have seed, hold it out. Be proud of what you what you hold in your hand because it represents your faith. It represents your hope. It represents your love to God. And because you're willing and obedient, God is going to bless you. God's going to take care. The devil has been rebuked. God's going to supply. God will supply. You just put seed in his hand. You put something in God's hand and watch him multiply it. Watch him multiply and give you a harvest of a hundredfold. If you believe that right now, beep your heart. However you want to give today, you may have envelopes. But if you choose to give electronically, praise God. It doesn't matter. Why? Because God looks at your heart. God knows a cheerful giver when he sees it. And I know Abundant Living Ministries, we don't have a problem in giving. We know how to give. We know all know how to give. Amen. If you know how to give, beep your heart. Remember, you can go to our website, alm.org, slash giving if you're watching by internet, or you can text it by dialing, by texting 954-280-0444. It should be going across. If you're watching by internet, you can see the, the, on, underneath the screen, you can see how you can give. But I, 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 I challenge every one of you, put something in God's hand. Practice your faith right now. Practice your hope in Him. Practice your love by giving something to God today. And I guarantee you, before this week is out, you will see a great and mighty return of God's faith to you, God's hope towards you, and God's love towards you. So, God, we stand corporately together with seed in our hand. We have faith, we have hope, and we have love for you. And we do this in obedience to your word because we all speak God's language. And I thank you, God for the great and mighty return. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Remember, remember, look for the opportunity this week. Look for the, the windows of opportunity of sharing your faith, sharing your hope, and sharing your love to someone. Because out there, there's someone's hope, faith, hope, and love has been broken. And it's through us, God can fix a broken heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. God bless you. Be blessed in the Lord and highly favor. We'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. God bless you. Peace like a river.